Good evening and welcome to Information Please, your Peoria Public Library on the air bringing you community events, library information. Tonight, Trisha Nowak can't be here. My name is Stacy Peterson from the Programming Department. And my very special guest tonight is actually no stranger to Peoria or the library. He is a renowned historian, uh, an accomplished author, a man about town, a, a, a veteran, um, and I present to you Mr. Norman Kelly. How Glad are you, Norman? Glad to be here. Thanks. So happy to hear, have you here. Uh, as I said, I kind of talked a little bit about what you've done, but I'd kind of like to give a little bit of a running list of some of your accomplishments if you've got a few minutes for me to, <laughs> to go on about that. Uh, Norm, you are first and foremost, in my mind, the author of f at least 14 books, two right. unpublished mm -hmm. that I know of. You've been published numerous times in magazines like Art and Society, in News and Views, in Illinois Outdoor. I mean, mm -hmm. you've, you've really kind of run the gamut covering stories that are pertinent mm -hmm. to Peoria history. Uh, you've also written a play that's been performed that's in right. the Quad Cities. That's, you know, actually I wrote two. One, the library. We did it in a library. I don't remember what it was. Was that the radio play? Yeah, it was. And that actually featured some local celebrities, if yeah, I recall. Vic Burnett was in that. Vic and Burnett. And Steve Burnett. Charter. Mm -hmm. And two Denise other. Molina. Or, yeah, she was great. Yeah. And then the guy that played the private eye, I forgot his name, but he was marvelous. And again, Steve Charter and Vic Burnett and Denise Molina, mm -hmm. all longtime supporters of the library exactly. so you actually brought a forum for them that I we weren't used I to called having them in. and told them what we were going to do and uh, whoever from the library arranged it all wow it was really fun to do and to watch them do say my words was fun now was that mm -hmm. play also read at cornstock no or was that a different radio it, play it, yeah it was a different one and this one was called an artful murder an artful murder and it was um, you know who done it yes. you know, a who done it and uh, that really I really enjoyed and they did that in uh, high school they played uh, that play but they of course they couldn't do it, it was too adult but yes. they did use my characters and uh, a lot of other things about the show itself but when they contacted me and said they were going to have foreplay they called it I oh. said wow that's pretty neat and they put on four plays they didn't produce them okay. they just sat around the table and talked and then mine was the last one and I had 14 actors in it oh my gosh and to sit there and watch people uh, say your words and finally when it was all over and I really enjoyed it I said you know if I could write like you people act <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here, would I? I'd be in New York somewhere. You know? But it was fun to do. Well, we're certainly lucky that we have a place like Cornstock that can bring those experiences to life. Absolutely. But we really wouldn't have that opportunity had you not started writing. Um, True. Which, that is a story in itself, and we'll get to that in a minute. Right. I'd also like to point out you really are a Renaissance man. You are on the radio. You, I do. Uh, we've got you on the radio with Royce and Roger frequently. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Every Sunday we can hear you with the Red Nose Gang on right. WMBD 1470. Wrong. Is, oh, 10. Uh, w O A M. W O A M, pardon 1350. me. 1350. I know they'll the be glad I corrected that. They'll huh? be so glad. <laughs> and be, having been on the show, I'm a little bit embarrassed. You used to go that. on WMBD quite a bit That's, in the old days. Yep. Yeah, they're, mm. going, they're quite popular in the area as yeah. well. You also have received some very interesting. Accolades. You've been the. Uh, you've been recognized by Crime Stoppers five yeah, times. That was nice, wasn't yeah. it? Distinguished citizen. <laughs> I really did laugh at that. You know. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> hadn't heard my background. Huh? Oh. But it was very nice. The state police too, I think, because mm -hmm. when I wrote Officer Down, uh, thanks to the library. I mean, where would I get all that stuff? Right. And I just had a wonderful time writing that book about the officers that were killed in action. Well, that's you know? and that brings me to your life prior to becoming an author because really the two intersected at one point but tell us a little bit about what you did before you really started taking on the writing mm -hmm. and how those two things kind of blended you together. Know, I got out of Woodruff High School go off to the Korean War end up in the Azores at islands and then when I came back home uh, you know, I, I was haunted by the fact that the soldiers, when I told them I was from Peoria, mm -hmm. they treated me like I actually was a gangster myself. 
and I never could understand why, why, where'd you learn that? And they said, oh, that's just your reputation in Peoria. And so when I came back, I talked to Betty, uh, the lady Robinson or Roberson. Ro Roberson. Yes, long time library employee. Us, long time ago. And she said, well, Norm, we have everything here. Why don't you look into that? And of course, I said, well, thank you. And of course, I had no idea what she meant. Look into what? You know, you <laughs> what can't. What are you going to find? You can't Google it, can you? Right, not and those so days. And so she began to, you, first thing she showed me was the Peoria Anna. And very few people know about the Peoriana, but it's a marvelous, what is it actually? Well, the Peoriana, and I came across that as well when I started working with you for our popular Body Peoria lecture uh -huh. series. Um, the Peoria Anna are snippets of, it looks to be, newspaper clippings. Yeah. So, but it's all done, categorized, mm -hmm. if I recall, alphabetically. Absolutely. So, uh, and, and chronologically as chronologically well. Chronologically as well. It's a, it's a Fascinating. So archival. You flip, let's say you flip over 1935, right? And there's something about Gerald Thompson and this murder. I said, right. "Well, wait a minute, maybe they're right." But then I was nudged into the 1800s. And nudged? Who did the nudging? Of course, Betty. Betty did. Now, yeah. why? Why would she nudge you in that she direction? She didn't want me to jump right into the middle of our history, because I'm talking 1941s, right? And she realized that the the find out about Peoria, you have to go. Back, so I went back to 1828. 1828. When the first steamboat chugged up uh, of the river, and then of course got into the beginning of Peoria and wonderful periods of time, our opera house, all the steamboats, and of course gambling and prostitution, and our notorious madams. And we just took it all the way up until finally then I got into 1941, yes. when that's the only time these guys could possibly have any recognition at all during the war years. And then so I unraveled our entire history realizing what it really was with a brilliant beautiful city and a tremendous things that you know go on in our town so it's wonderful. after having met these gi's mm -hmm. who'd heard of the notoriety of the peoria gangsters that's right. what did you find about well, we didn't have any gangsters well that's quite a surprise isn't Absolutely. it you know, all bernie shelton <laughs> bernie shelton bernie shelton that's all you ever hear and then once i really unraveled who bernie shelton was it, it just disappoints people and to say that most of the older people that knew him personally right. used words like he enjoyed being this reputation. He paid his bills by cash. I don't ever remember him doing anything in Peoria that ever got any notoriety, and except then I learned that he was in a, a big fisticuffs in May of 1948, mm -hmm. and then he was killed in July 1948. And in between, there's more gangster fans out there in Peoria to call me a liar. They, what well, my uncle said and my cousin said, well, all your cousins Cousins and all your uncles were wrong, folks. <laughs> it's all myth. What kind? How? What do you think led to that myth in Peoria? I mean, what do you think led to people believing it was a wide open town, as yeah, you've taught absolutely. me? Absolutely. I've never anyone ever say that. I didn't say it was bawdy. It was wild. Right. Prostitution, gambling, booze, women, wild, mean, tough guys, mm -hmm. murders. Uh, but the sad part is, folks, in all those times we only had 238. His, uh, uh, murders in our entire history. Divide that by the 105 years that I wrote about, yeah. and man, come on, give yeah. me something to write about. <laughs> Look at Prohibition in Peoria, 13 years, we had 79 murders, divide that by 13, that's 5.5. That sounds like this hoodlum, horrible town. Of course, these gangster fans out there I had Bernie Shelton in Peoria during Prohibition, which of course he wasn't. Right. He was being a bad guy, killing people, I guess. What do I know? Down in southern Illinois. I don't care what he did. He came here in 1941. He's a pug, a thug, uneducated ex-convict. Right. He took over gambling. Can you imagine? We had 242 taverns, tough, ruck guys with money, and they're going to let this pug come in town and take over gambling. It's the biggest joke in history. And of course, I spent 32 years telling the truth. Have and, you yeah. encountered, I mean, you already mentioned that you disappoint people oh, when absolutely. you tell them that the gangsters didn't exist. But have you ever encountered any resistance in any of your public, you know, public examples when you've had lectures, or you've talked to people? Because I know that when we did the Body Historia, mm -hmm. Body Peoria History series, it was a four-part series. Yeah. And 
when you and I were talking about it, we thought, how many people are going to show up? And, and yeah. the first one, I believe we had 82 people and mm -hmm. a dog. Uh -huh. And then the second one, we had 120 people, and uh -huh. that was in the larger room. Nice. And then we had 140, 140 to 160, and then at the last one, we had 180. I know. And out of all of those people, never once did I see anybody stand up and say, Mr. Kelly, you are wrong. They I all agreed you with know you. You know what, Stacey? I dare them. Yeah. You know why? Because I studied it. I'm a historian because I love the city. Mm -hmm. They're talking about their Uncle Cy, Uncle Joe. Right. They're talking about their great grandfather who knew it all. Right. Well, of course, that's just myth, folks. That's the whole idea of Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. It's a myth. It's perpetuated because it's fun. And I can tell you all kinds of, of things. That, um, in 46, we had a total of six people die mm -hmm. in gangland style things. So I tell them about that. But they want it to they want to be gangsters. And there are kidnappings in Peoria when they find out that three or four of them were just people that lived in our town who kidnapped people with money. Mm -hmm. Oh, but they kidnapped gangsters. I used to say to them, what do you want to kidnap my dad? Take me three days and raise a dime, you know, to right. get him out. The whole, but the whole idea, we had brutality, we had terrible murders. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when you tell me about a gangster, I think of Al Capone. Right. I don't think of uh, some guy like, like Eli Cupy in our town or some of the guys that we knew uh, uh, in our town that were just plain tough guys. Yes. But they love to be labeled with gangsters. That's more fun. And if I shoot you... I pray that I shoot you with a submachine gun, you know, so that it's a gangster. And never once, in all the uh, stories that I've, uh, you know, researched, never once was a Thompson submachine gun ever used. <laughs> oh, well, Norm, so what? I said, well, you're the one talking about gangsters and machine guns, not me. What, mm -hmm. what I think is very interesting, Norm, is that you've taught me that the Peoria Public Library, and this is a legal term, and we're going to talk a little bit about right. how you would know some of these legal terms, but you taught me that the Peoria Public Library is the keeper of the record. Absolutely. And the records are only, you know, the records sit there on the shelves until somebody discovers them, translates them, presents them, and yeah. really brings them to life. So yeah. you are kind of a dream patron to come into local Absolutely. history. You challenge our fantastic prepared staff and you uh, you kind of throw the gauntlet down and say I'm researching this story that's right but then you're able to take the pa printed page and make it into something very vital and very appealing mm -hmm. um, but you did have a legal background before you started writing I'm a paralegal I did that uh, for 18 years legally in a law office also I have a private investigator's license I showed you that picture you did. It was <laughs> I fantastic. looked like I was 14 years old <laughs> but anyway when you go into the library and you just stand there and they're trying to get out of you what do you want mm -hmm. and then finally if you can just have brains enough to utter something mm -hmm. immediately Betty used to tell me exactly where that was and now we have Linda and of course Elaine and there's Laura and yeah. Wanda and so many of those ladies who are on your side immediately. I think that's the key to it. They want you. Yes. And I and then of course when I would then write the story, I would tell them, "Did you read it yet?" <laughs> you know, I wanted them after all uh, historians are thieves. I am a wonderful thief. You show me a story that was written in 1842 and I'll make you think I wrote it. So in your stories that I've read, um, they are so realistic, and yet I know that they aren't nonfiction. I know that yeah. you're writing fiction, mm -hmm. but how did your law background, how did your private investigation background feed into this? Because they're yeah. so gritty at times. I know, and the truth is that I am actually a, a, a true crime writer. That's how I got in America's Most Wanted. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a... Uh, a historian because I write about old-time Peorians. Mm -hmm. True. I'm a, a mystery writer because of course I write fiction, mystery writer. And then I write the short stories and I, I dare you to tell me which is true and which isn't. I used to take people around Peoria and tell them, you know, real stories. But in all of those states there was always one totally fictional. Really? And then I would hold up my book, autograph book, and I say, 
tell me of the seven stories. I want you to tell me who, which one, and of course, I never gave away those, those books because they, I, there's one that I almost cry in, and that's the one that was fiction. Yes. I told her about a, lady, a girl named June in my life, and this is true. And she died, but had nothing to do with the murder. Mm -hmm. And of course, I was very close to her house when I told the story. And I really felt sad about June. And when they see that I was actually kind of emotionally involved in the story, it was all just part of the lie. Mm. You can't write and go on public television or anywhere if you don't know how to act a little bit. You know, you have to have a little showmanship. Yeah. P.T. Barnum would would yeah. definitely say that. Yeah, I mean, you saw me out at the library. Some of that is quote entertainment. You know, it it, is. I know, I know what I'm doing. I, you know, I know you're looking at me, and you're. I think you're involved emotionally. Mm -hmm. I'm not laughing at you, but I realize, boy, am I putting this over on you? And that's how I do it, folks. And I guess that's why they come. That's why I quit doing it. And now I just teach. And you do pro pro private lectures. You've gone and you did a private event yeah. with Sky Harbor that was yeah. kind of an interesting private, event. Private, huh? Well, wow. private, ticket, ticketed event, yeah. I should say. And then I, I love to go to private homes. Yes. I, 18 people something. You have to give me a Budweiser when I walk in or I walk out. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty I good do. admission. Yeah, that's one, it. You work cheap. Oh, two beers. you got to have two. Two, two beers. And one then on we, ice. Well, and then it's really fun because you're just in their home and talking and they are feel free then to, even if they interrupt you, I don't care. But the point is it's really intimate. It's fun. I speak at luncheons and and I do film noir, you know. Yes. Can you imagine calling black and white old film, film noir? And that's certainly with our friend Steve Tarter right, from the Journal Star and Wanda <laughs> Phillips at the library is so very right. instrumental in that. My friends at Elvis would laugh out loud if I used that word. Just some old black and white films. <laughs> Detective films. Oh, absolutely. You know, now when we looked at, you and I were looking kind of at the evolution of your writing and I could be wrong. Tell me how old you were when you started writing, seriously. I, uh, around my 50th birthday. My 50th birthday. I'm 80 now. Yes. And I started uh, running when I was 50. Mm -hmm. I was unemployed at age 50, running at night, you know, worrying. I, had un I, I went to unemployment office and the jerks hired me. Come on, give me my money. <laughs> you I don't want to work for this. And so I, I started running. I run a little bit at night, I, um, especially if there's snow on the ground go out that well and run. Yeah. And I came back one that night and hand wrote uh, Running With Wolves. That was the title. That was it. Now I was that one of the little plaque books that you started never with? Never made it. Never made it there. Why is that? I don't know. So we have another know. another unpublished work. Yes, I have. Oh, I have a lot of those. Okay. Uh, but then uh, being the first time then I, I wrote and my brother worked at a printing company. He said, Norm, why don't we put those in little booklets? And I said, well, fine. And he illustrated those. We, too mm -hmm. bad we can't show some of those. Yeah, and we have uh, 12 of those beautifully illustrated. We do I have know. those in local history Absolutely. at the library if they're anybody there. wants to come there and look at them, for and sure. That's how it started. And then yeah. I put them in a book called Murder in Familiar Places. And that was a in the library. collection. 12 stories? Uh-huh. 12 stories. Those are all fiction. And uh, really, as a writer, enjoy the plot. I went to school one week. You know, <laughs> going to be a writer, now I are one. You know? <laughs> and so uh, the teacher said I wasn't much of a writer, uh, but you're a good storyteller. Now who said that, that to you? That was Mrs. Versace, that's Dick Versace's mom. That's right. She wrote um, A Fly Nun, sold it for 1500 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine it's probably worth, what, 30 million at one time. Probably, but you weren't yeah. much of a writer, oh, but a no. good storyteller, she, she, she said. She told me. So I would send the stories to her like a school teacher, mark them all up and send it back, you know. As an adult. Uh, yeah. As an adult, you're writing this yourself, and then... Got a lot of Fs. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, would she say, fine, Norm, that looks great. And then I set that aside, and then I, I, did, I would have, like, hauntings. I would have stories in my head every time I turned around. Really? And I would write them all. I've probably written three, four, four, maybe 450 short stories, some published, some just sitting at home. And then when did you transition from the short story into a longer format? You know how I did that? How? I wrote longer stories. <laughs> That's how it I can't be that simple. I was so brilliant. <laughs> I, you know, I just began to oh, make them longer. And then pretty soon, my editor's saying, quit making them so long. 
Do you ever come up with a shortage of ideas, or do you always have something? Where do you oh. get that inspiration, especially now that you're not running as much? That's right. Maybe well, on the golf course? Oh, I don't know. I go sometimes. I beg people at the library. You beg them. Yeah, I go to Elaine and say, "Come on, Elaine." In there, give me something. And so she said, well, I've got this town crier. How about that? And that's what I just printed. Really? The town crier. Thanks, Elaine. She said, well, and it was part of, I was doing some other story, but she included that. And it was a picture of a guy, and they called him the town crier. And where can we find this story? Is it in uh, News and News Views? News and Views. News and Views, which you can find in so many public places at all of the all library free. locations. Another uh -huh. wonderful publication, and I know that you were actually the featured artist in residence in their inaugural issue, was in the Peorian magazine. Our yeah. friend Paul Gordon had you on his TV show. Yeah. Your stories were serialized. That's two of my, my fiction books. Or steer, and now they're in his junk drawer. It's true. You can pull up the Peoria and look under some junk drawer. He said, "Now, Norm, that's not personal." Right. But, but you know, the the, the one uh, the downstate story is yes. another one. Elaine Hopkins has it here. If you guys want to write, just pull up downstate story. And yeah, and talk and, a little bit about how important downstate stories could be to somebody who's trying to get started. It's a great boost. And they pay you money. That's unusual. Yeah, That's they do. very unusual. And you have to pull up downstate story to find out what the ramifications. We know mm -hmm. how do you go about doing it. But it's so neat. And to see your, your story. And then you get a check. You're a professional then, folks. That's true. You know, and I've gotten a, a I paid for some stores pay. Some pay, people pay for me to lecture but if I like you and I like the people and I don't charge them anything just like the library it was new and we wanted people to come out there yes uh, you know but I think some of the other short stories that go in uh, the uh, what is this one called uh, American sports outdoor mm -hmm. and they just give me freedom I can write about anything I just wrote about a an Indian uh, uh, and, a, and a young man from Peoria who was skinned alive. Now, I got that strictly out of the Peoriana. Isn't that amazing? I saw it in 1850, and they, a little brief story. Now, now, I shouldn't really say that because it's just four lines. Out of that four lines, I go to Elaine or Linda and say, can you find something about this? And then, of course, if the story is big enough and it appears that I can make a story out of it, and then, of course, I do. I don't change the facts in those stories. And you might be, Norm Kelly, the only person I know of who has his own file his own file named Snug. after him in the local history. So, I mean, that takes, yeah. there, there's a quite, a, you've got to reach a certain standing with the local history and genealogy staff to I get your so. own file. It was nice of them. They said, Norm, you're going to have a vertical file. I had no, I don't even know what they meant. <laughs> and it is a vertical file. Mm -hmm. Hard print, right? Yes. Everything I ever do and I, within when the fall comes, I will gather up all my print, all yes. the print of it, and take them down there and give them to Elaine, and they'll, they'll then put them in the file. And I look over there, and occasionally I see someone going through it, and they always introduce me. Isn't that nice? What is that like? That's how I met Bob Selaski. I've met uh, several other people that are writing. Uh, I don't know their names anymore. Oh my gosh, you you've know? well, you've been a huge influence on many people who are writing right now in this area. Um, you, that I'm proud of. Really. Yes, you you are. Um, I can say an author, but you're also a mentor to so many. So in the library, we've hosted um, Peter Karras, uh -huh. a judge who's actually written a book, and Lance Zedrick, who's yes. written several books and been featured on the History Channel, and he's come to several of your events. That's Bob right. Selaski, who has documented the Turkey Day football tradition That's in Peoria, right. the only such documentation that I know. I know. Um, it, and it's Ken Zersky is a brand new one. Ken Zersky, who will be coming to the library That's on right. October 15th to speak of the wreck of the Columbia. And he has done an enormous amount of research, uh, thanks to the people in the library and everybody he contacted. And then he sequenced it so perfectly. Oh, it's a lovely book. Wonderful I've only read an excerpt. Book. We are going to have that in the library, um, in the collection, right. permanent and And a couple ladies, oh, I can't remember their names anymore, but I yell at them a lot. 
Yes, there's, I there's a lot of tough love. I was, they, they talk about Ryan and Book, and I said, quit talking about it. Ask Peter. Oh, yes. They, he'll tell you. That, the first time I met you, you said, just quit writing about it and write the That's book. That's right. And I, that was I, the best example I I told him that in given. public, didn't I? You told him in front of 20 people. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and the book is now written. And the man's a judge. You know, if he ever got me in front of a court, he'd probably get even with me, won't he? Yes. But the book is wonderful, and I hope they're all successful. Well, I think you know? that's, and you know, it's very important to note that people can access your hard collection at the library whenever we're open which uh -huh. is nine to six and this is in the main library in the local history room on lower level one but your stories live out in cyberspace 24 uh, 7 it's, it's very neat so we can find these in a couple of places i'll, I'll plug the library first absolutely PeoriaPublicLibrary.org. If you go to um, What We Do, which is a tab across the top, to Local History, to the Local History Collection, they will see your name and they can click on there and they can get 32 stories. 32 that stories. That you've kindly donated to that, that website. We're yeah. working to put podcasts of the body Peoria history on the website so wow. people can find it. But you also have the Peorian Historian blog page That's with right. many of your stories. I think you just Google uh, Norm Kelly, a uh, Peoria Historian. Probably the easiest way to find it, isn't That's it? it? But you have to put Peoria, Illinois. Peoria, Illinois, not Peoria, Arizona. No. Just Norm Kelly. You know. And we can find your stories just out there, 24-7. I, I really enjoy world. the fact that I can pull up my own stories because, of course, I forget them. You You've know, written so many. I hate to admit that I am now researching myself. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of stupid. But, but, there, but I really, without the library, without all of that, and the help is so easy, just ask them. We Just love that. Ask him. Well, and you've taught me something very interesting is that a good writer doesn't focus so much on the self but on the other. Mm -hmm. And certainly you have done such a wonderful job bringing in the paper history that the keeper of the records have down in local history you and bringing it to, to vital life, Norm. And for with that. the photographs, Elaine yes. and those people are able then to photograph, send those photographs to my editors, and I don't have to do anything. It's marvelous. I'm the star, right? I write the stories. Oh, Norm. And you do all the work. You it's, know? it's been wonderful. Thanks. So we've been enjoying this time with Norm Kelly, um, local historian and author. You can find many of his stories at any different outlets at the Peoria Public Library on, on our website. Please look forward to many exciting events coming up, including Music in the Mackenzie series, including the Armchair Traveler series starting on August 22nd, as well as the Aging Eye, also found in August. North Branch, we're going to have a B Day, so get out to the North Branch on August 18th for an entire day's worth of B programming, story times, and crafts. Of course, we have many things going on at all of our locations. You can find all of this at PeoriaPublicLibrary.org. Thank you. It's been a wonderful evening, and thanks for watching. Information, please.